All right, this is fetal development. We have the zygote, the fertilized oocyte. Note that the sperm pronuclei has not yet fused with the oocyte, or the female pronuclei. The oocyte is fertilized in the distal fallopian tube and is metaphase two of meiosis. And so we can see that over on here, actually, the fallopian tube's right here, so the distal would be down here. And then the oocyte comes out into the fallopian tube. Fertilization can occur during day 14 of the 28-day reproductive cycle, and it can only be fertilized for a short period of time, as little as 15 hours after ovulation. Then we have the two-cell embryo. This occurs approximately 30 hours after fertilization. Each cell is called a blastomere. Then we have a four-cell embryo. Again, each cell is a blastomere. And an eight-cell embryo. Each cell is a blastomere. And then we have the marula which is about 16 blastomeres. This occurs around day three after fertilization. These are totipotent or totipotent. Each cell has the potential to develop into a complete individual. Then up here we have a blastula. This is a hollow ball of cells. It begins around day four. And by this time the embryo has reached the uterus. We have the inner cell mass, which will become the embryo proper. The trophoblasts are the outer wall of the embryo that contribute to the placenta and produce HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, and that keeps the corpus luteum functioning. It produces progesterone to maintain the uterus for pregnancy. The blastosol is this fluid-filled area. Implantation or nidation occurs around day six after fertilization at the blastula stage. Then we have the bilaminar blastula, which is at day seven. The inner cell mass differentiates into two layers. We have the epiblast, which is this yellow layer, and the hypoblast, which is this red. This hypoblast will give rise to the yolk sacs when it's lined, uh, when its cells line the blastocel. Then we have the trophoblast, which again is this outer wall, and the blastocel, which is this fluid-filled area that will be lined by the mesoderm to become the primary yolk sac. And at this point, it's multipotent or pluripotent which means the cells are more limited in their potential to give rise to various structures or systems, but not an entire organism. Then we have the late blastula here. This is around day eight. The trophoblasts differentiate into three things. The cytotrophoblasts, which is a single layer that surrounds the embryo, and that gives rise to the syncytiotrophoblasts, which are right here. Syncytio refers to the fact that they're multinucleated, and the syncytiotrophoblasts are aggressively invasive cells that digest into the uterus to establish the placenta. Then we have lacuna, which are these spaces that are eventually filled with the maternal blood, which bathe the chorionic villi. Then we have the blastosol, which is again this space, once lined by uh, cells from the hypoblast, it becomes the primary yolk sac. And then we have the amnion, which is this roof, and then the space is the amniotic cavity. We also have the epiblast here and the hypoblasts.